I bought from AliExpress this audio switch. It's a device where you can connect several audio amplifiers and several speakers. And then you can make any combination amplifier speaker you want. Easy, clean and fast without having to connect disconnect cables, make a mess of wires, drag the speakers and the amplifiers around and lose a lot of time. It's more for testing and comparison reasons where you can change the sound seamlessly without disturbance to hear the differences between different systems. And the box even has something written on it. These are the parameters according to the seller's site. The up to 300 watts power is an exaggerated statement because we'll see later that the internals can get warm at only 50 watts. They declare a frequency response 10 Hz to 50 kHz but in reality the range is far greater from 0 Hz to more than 100 kHz because there's no component which can alter the frequency. The weight is a healthy 1 kilo and that's a very true. I'm trying to do a test setup using the Sony power amplifier and its floor speakers monitor audio. The other amplifier is a German brand named Dual and the shelf speakers from my bedroom Warfadale. The audio is provided by a phone playing YouTube free license music and the audio cable goes one channel to Sony and the other to Dual. For both amplifiers I only use one channel in so there's only one speaker connected. This one is playing through this one. Now this one is going to play through this one. Absolutely no switching noise. I can switch both speakers simultaneously. Or none at all. Now this amplifier. No switching noise whatsoever. That one, this one, that one, this one, that one, this one, this speaker, this speaker, this one, that one, this one, that one. Yeah, that's about it. This is our device. I couldn't hear any crosstalk between channels. These bindings are rather decent, banana plug and the possibility to squeeze the cable inside here. Let's see if I can unscrew it all the way. Yeah. A little bit of metal plate, a metal thread, not much metal right there. It would have been nice if it had a metal washer to squeeze the cable well between two metal plates. But anyway, some nice screws here and there. Rubber feet. You'll see that the input selection is uh, selectable only one position as the output select you can select both outputs at the same time or none of them yeah that's it model B042 let's take it apart Sadly we started with a minus, which is this bolt which is stuck. stuck. Oh, two big resistors over there. 20 watts 
two ohms each on the speaker side here. This is speaker B and speaker A output. I'm going to try to figure out what they are doing. And it looks like we have a PCB over there, which is double sided as I can see. Those switches feel like a little rough. I guess they could use a little bit of lubrication. Those two are working good, but they are nice and strong and the firm switching. The PCB has some labels on it, which is nice. As far as we can see over there. Let's try to take it apart completely and see what's what. Ta-da! Then there's one piece of metal and another one and a cup of coffee. Thank you very much. And now the big reveal. These are pretty pretty strong traces over there. If they put the insulation here, I don't know why they didn't put the insulation over there. I guess that's because this uh part is held in place with a lot of screws, the threaded rods and a little bit of metal contact over there. Yeah, that's the red binder. Some thin sheet of metal going on to the PCB, to the first selector here and in the end only two channels going to the, the speaker selector. I'm going to try to figure out what's the matter with these two resistors here. The electric diagram is very simple. There are no active components. There's just a resistor in series with the signal, 2 ohms 20 watts, but as I measured it, it is a 2.1 ohms. And I really don't know what its purpose is out there. I want to measure the insertion loss, basically the internal resistance of this device, to see how much power is lost into it. It was ideal to have a milliohm meter, but of course my equipment is an ordinary hobby one, not laboratory grade equipment. And testing on the load can reveal how the contacts and connectors behave when they start to warm up when subjected to big currents. With this power supply I'll apply a voltage to each input and as a load I'll use this dummy load I made years ago for just this purpose to test audio amplifiers. I select 8 ohms load and I measure the input voltage, the current and the output voltage. I write everything down in a spreadsheet and using ohms law I calculate the internal resistance. I use an EOSR meter to check whether this audio selector has some sort of impedance like an inductance or capacitance. For the ESR test, I short circuit the output so I won't have to subtract any load value. So, we have 24.63 volts input, precisely 2 amperes, and precisely 20.16 volts output. Let's do all the other channels. Now I've connected the ESR meter to this thing and uh, as you can see 
it doesn't detect anything so the switch itself doesn't have any component nor resistive, resistive inductive capacitance nothing okay uh, now I'm going to try to short circuit the output and see what this ESR meter detects as internal component now I'm connecting this to the first input channel left and test again remember the output is short circuited 2.26 ohm alright let's write this down well this is what I got in terms of insertion loss or just attenuation between the input and output and uh, it is really really small and negligible I'll spare you uh, all the details but it's less than 0 0.1 ohms on most of the channels and um, I've also measured it with the ESR meter and uh, that confirms uh, my measurements this is room temperature but uh, I'm going to show you that after more than an hour of measuring this thing become a bit hot 35 degrees over there and on the bottom around 40 degrees this is where those uh, serious resistors are and it's obvious that they got hot at around 50 watts going through this uh, audio switch 41 degrees Celsius versus 26 as at room temperature it's not exceptionally gorgeous it's not something to write your baby back home about it but it's just worth the money and uh, even if, if you might not want to keep it permanently connected uh, in series with your uh, stereo system but uh, you might just as well leave it there it even comes with a leaflet yeah and it just tells you how complicated it is to operate the whole thing is just worth the money you can make uh, one yourself as a home built device because it's very simple there is no active uh, components inside it's only passive that's why you will never see any power outlet but I was trying to calculate how much this thing will cost and you will never get to make one as cheap and as uh, good looking as this one even though you might acquire some better quality components than those used with this audio selector but uh, I guess it's just not worth the effort to put so much uh, work and money into making uh, such a selector when you can just buy one as cheap as that and as finished and uh, just as robust as this one Houston, Eagle has landed. Roger, tranquility, we copy you on the ground.